So we've seen how to represent lines, planes, and hyperplanes in terms of parametric systems, right? Where we have a bunch of different parameters and we're allowed to vary those. Well, we can also represent the usual constraint system or constraint representation, say, of lines, planes, and hyperplanes in terms of what will be called the normal equations, right? And the, they're called the normal equations because there's this, this vector that shows up that's called the normal. Uh, and the normal is, in the long run, going to always be perpendicular in some sense to the plane. So the, the normal equation for a line in 2D is, well, we take the original equation ax plus by is equal to c, so this is our, this defines a line in two dimensions, and this is the same thing as saying, well I have an act, a vector where, I, where I, uh, I pull in a and b, and I'm going to take a dot product with the vector x, y, minus some vector p, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. Right, and this vector p is any vector such that when I dot a, b with it, I get negative c, and so I can bring the c over here, and everything works out. You can, you can work out that this is okay. So where a, b dotted with p is equal to zero. And so the way to interpret this, right, so another way to write this, and we'll set this equal to the normal, and this equal to an x vector. So we re really write this as n dotted with x minus p and set that equal to zero and that's the normal equation this is the normal equation for that for this line well p is just some point on the line and n is essentially everything that's perpendicular once I get to the plane or to the line and so the picture looks like this I've got a line p is some point whatever point I had, and n is a vector that's exactly orthogonal to everything that lives on the line if I, if I, if I draw it relative to my p point. So that's a really nice representation and uh, it works out in, in three dimensions, four dimensions, whatever. I can use it to represent lines, planes, and hyperplanes, and it's really good to know this vector. The normal vector is very important for encoding a plane. So let's let's do a quick example to make sure that we understand basically what's going on here. So so if my normal vector is one one so three dimensions uh, and my point on this thing is one two one then I have n dotted with x minus p. In the long run that'll be x1 plus x2 plus x3, right? So I, I distribute this dot product in and, I, and when I multiply, when I dot product in with x I get this, when I dot product in with p I can end up with negative 4 is equal to 0 and I recover an equation for a plane in three dimensions. And the picture is as follows. z-axis, I have my y-axis, or my, in this case, x1, x2, and x3. This is 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Then if I go out here, well, p is 1 unit in x, 2 units in y, so it'll be roughly here and then one unit up. So this is my p vector. That's my p vector. So everything's gonna be here and then my normal vector is 1, 1, 1 and it looks basically like this. Pointing out. And then the plane is going to look basically like this. 
So I've got this line going through it, and I've got this line going through it. So it goes on forever like this guy. And that that's a that's a basic kind of simple example.